Hi everyone, I'm back. So, uh, my name's Laura and you're watching my channel, So Very Laura, where I talk to you about my adventures in creating a wardrobe to bring me joy. And today I'm coming to you with something a little bit different. So, I have thought of five ways in which I, and possibly you, can progress um, our me made journeys when we're not near our sewing machines. So if that's something that interests you, please keep watching. So welcome if you're new here and welcome back if you're an existing subscriber. As I said in the intro, um, I've dreamt up five ways and actually tried them uh, as to how I can progress my me made journey when I'm not actually um, with my sewing machine. So obviously that can happen even if you're at home, if you need to get your sewing machine um, serviced or it packs up. But in my case, it's happening because I am working away for some of the week. And in fact, I've just got back from 10 days away because I was working away at the beginning and end of that time. And I went to stay with my mum in the middle. And I was really tempted to take either my sewing machine or my overlocker or possibly both with me. Uh, but in the end, I decided not to because I'm right in the middle of sewing the Sew Over It Sorrento jacket, which I'm making for my collab with Mandy from Make It Sew. And that was all threaded up ready. But I really thought trying to do something involving top stitching and all the rest of it while I was away was just a step too far. So instead, I thought about what else I could do. So here are my five ways in which I progress my me made wardrobe while I was away. So the first thing is to log your stash. So I have been trying to do this with the help of the fabulous Stash Hub app. And I'm not being paid to say this. This is not a sponsored video. But Stash Hub is the app that has been set up by the fabulous Yvette, who is Blossom Sandwich on Instagram and YouTube, and her husband. And if you haven't seen it yet, um, it's a way of logging your fabrics and also your patterns. And then you can do other things like um, match them up to create projects. You can list out notions. Um, there might be other ways that you can do it. Some people use Trello, some people might do it by hand in a notebook. But what I did while I was away, I had my home laptop with me for other reasons, because I needed to do some admin with my mum. And all my PDF patterns are stored on my laptop. They are backed up as well, I promise, but they are stored on my home laptop. So what I was able to do was use Stash Hub to actually log those patterns because I could see what I had. And there's also now, I'll pop you a screenshot in um, of how Stash Hub works here, but there's something called a magic input. And if you find the pattern on the internet and then you put the URL in, it'll come up with the photos and the key information about the pattern. The one thing it doesn't do, because obviously this depends on um, the particular size you're going to make is put in the amount of fabric that you're going to need. So you need to think about what size you might make and how much fabric you need. But the rest of it, it does it all for you. So last week ago, Monday, I sat down with my laptop where I was staying while I was away for work and I logged maybe 10 patterns in the space of about an hour. And that was really good because it's one of those things, and I think we all do it, that you know, when we're in our sewing rooms, we want to sew, but actually there's a lot we can do to make life easier for us and find out what we've actually got before we go off and buy new patterns. And I'm really guilty of that. And you can actually also do it with fabric. And I've been better at logging new patterns and new fabrics as I bought them. But I have got a massive backlog and I also have a lot of printed patterns, which I will also need to do. But I think if I take a photo of them and the pattern number, then I can probably still do the magic input. So that's the first thing you can do. You could sort your stash of patterns or fabrics, depending where you are and what you've got available to you. 
So the second thing is getting inspired. And no, I don't mean going out and buying a load of fabric, tempting though it is. I think we all feel like that if we're away and we want to go online and we look at fabric. But just thinking about what have you already got? So again, I was doing this on Stash Hub. So as I was logging things, I was thinking, oh, well, that would go, that fabric would go with that pattern. And I was logging them into projects. And again, I'll pop a screenshot in here of what I'm talking about. But you might go on Pinterest for inspiration. You might go on Instagram for inspiration. You might have a look, depending where you are and what you're doing. You might go out and have a look at ready to wear clothes, either online or in person, and just get some ideas as to what you want to sew next. So I just called that second thing get inspired. So that's all the kind of thinking about what you might be going to do. For the future but what about sewing and making things in the here and now if you can't sew okay so the first thing I did was I before I started sewing I used to knit an awful lot and then I started crocheting and I've probably done that less if I'm honest since I started sewing because Knitting was something I would do in front of the television in the evenings. But if I come up and sew, then obviously I'm not knitting. And I have had a sweater which has been on the go for about two years. And I just haven't got it done because generally I've been sewing. So I took that with me. And I'll be honest, I didn't do very much of it, but I did do a little bit. And the sweater that I'm making is called the Clotted Cream Pullover. And that's because I think in the pattern pick... It's um, in a kind of creamy, it's a cable um, knit and it's by um, Zanate Knits. I'll pop the name across the screen. Um, and I bought the pattern on Ravelry. Uh, so if it's still there, I'll pop the link below and I will just show you um, where I've got to. So if you've been watching me a while, you may have seen this before. I'm not going to turn it the right way around because I made the mistake of showing it to someone at work as I was in the process of taking things back to my car. And I, when I got it out again, I discovered that I pulled off all the stitches on the stitch holder and had to sort of do a rescue act. But you can see it's kind of cabley and um, it's got this, it's called moss stitch, this kind of brick stitch. And then it's got little bobbles that are made with a crochet hook. So it's the sort of pattern you have to concentrate on. But if you're sitting on your own in a hotel, you know, that's not a bad thing to be doing. So also you might choose to do some crochet. You might even choose to weave if you've got the facilities to do it. I don't know. But just thinking about other ways in which you might create your me made wardrobe. So that's something else that I thought of in terms of what I might do. Um, and then the next thing I thought of, again, there's a huge amount of different ways in which you might do this, is hand sewing. So you might say, well, I've got a hem that's going to be really difficult to do on the sewing machine anyway. Or you might say, I want to sew down um my collar on a shirt because that is one way you can do it if you don't like trying to stitch in the ditch. So you might have things like that to do. You might have mending to do. And again, depending where you are when you don't have your sewing machine, you might be able to take that with you if it'll fit in your luggage or you might be able to just do it sitting in your sewing room while your sewing machine's being serviced. So for me, I have thought about maybe doing some embroidery on clothing in the future. Um, and I don't mean, I know there's this beautiful um, Japanese art called Sashiko, which I haven't done. And I don't know if I'm ever going to be good enough to do something like that. But I'm thinking more along the lines of kind of conventional embroidery of flowers and things. So I'll pop a pic in here of this um, beautiful picture I found online, which is a Joe Brown's um, white denim jacket. And you'll see it's got this beautiful floral embroidery here. And I kind of think if I could learn to do that, that's something that I might be interested in doing on a garment. And so um, you might remember when I showed you what I bought in the United States, I bought um, a couple of embroidery kits. So I took one of them with me um, and it's this one. 
you can see it's um, a Mandela design. And I thought I'd start with this one first because I think it's probably got the more simple stitches in it. The other one is a floral design. So I've taken this with me on my 10 day stint and I actually did some of it. Did I do it both? both ends I'm not sure I might have done actually but anyway here is what I have done so far so you can see that I've got I've got some blue pieces in here and I've got some of the white obviously I've still got a way to go but again it struck me that because I'm away it transports fairly easily it's obviously not very big and that's a way in which I can learn a new skill I'm not doing it all over a piece of expensive white denim. I'm doing it on a piece of fabric. And if it all goes wrong, I can unpick it and it doesn't matter. It was something like $5.99 or something when I bought it. Um, so, yeah, and I'm actually quite enjoying it. So, yeah, doing some hand sewing. It's one of those things that reminds me of when when you're younger and you know, you've been invited to a party and you don't really want to go and your mum says you'll enjoy it when you get there and you do. And I feel a bit like that about just about any hand sewing I do. I always dread it. I dread sewing up knitting. I don't particularly like it if I hand, have to hand sew on a garment that I'm making. And then when I actually sit down and do it, I actually don't mind it. So, yeah. So, yeah, maybe think about doing some hand sewing if that's something that you can fit in your luggage or that you've got the capacity to do at home while you're without your sewing machine. So that's number four. And then the other thing, and this is probably the thing that I'm most pleased with. You remember in my last video, I rethought my Make 9 and I'll link to that video down below. Um, but one of the things that I think I struggle with and I think maybe we all struggle with is we always want to get on that sewing machine and we want to sew. And then you suddenly like, OK, I've done that. <gasps> I need to go and prep the next pattern. But you don't really want to because you prefer to sew. So if you've got something else out, you'll go and do that. So I was thinking, right, OK, I'm stuck in a hotel for four nights, um, at two at the beginning, two at the end of my 10 days away. Maybe I can at least get some paper patterns cut out. So I took two of my Make 9 patterns that I already had had printed out. I took the Mountain View jeans by Itch to Stitch, which I'd had printed by Fabuloso. And you'll see that if you look there, you'll see I worked out because I had the pattern with me on my laptop as well. I looked at the instructions and I worked out which sizes I needed to do for the measurements. and. The only change that I needed to do was to grade from a size 8 at the waist to a size 12 at the hip. And in fact, in practical terms, all that means is grading out on the waistband at the front and the back. So because I was lucky enough to be in my car, what I took with me, as well as the patterns and some scissors, obviously, I now can't find it, of course. Anyway, I took with me my... What have I done with it? It's there. Excuse the rustling. I took my hip curve with me so that I could do that and a pencil and a rubber. And I also took with me my, I'm not going to get it out, but this in here is the um, trouser block for the sew over it um, trouser block that I made. Uh, together with all my measurements. Now, in the end, I didn't get round to sort of looking in particular detail at things like the crotch depth, because also I know that with the Mountain View jeans, I need to alter them because I want to make them with a higher waist. And there is a cut line on that, but stupid on the pattern, sorry. But stupidly, I forgot to take any of my sticky tape with me. So I didn't do that. So I do need to alter the pattern. And to be honest, that's probably easier with my cutting table um, because I didn't have such a big space. I did have tables, but I didn't have anything the size of a cutting table there. But I got all the pattern pieces cut out and I got the grading on the waistband done. And I was good and I saved up 
all the big bits of tissue paper so that I can use them uh, when I trace out other patterns or alter other patterns. So that was the first one I did. So I did that in the first week. And then in the second week, I also had with me the I Am Nelt trousers. And on this one, um, it recommends you go with your hip size and you go with your the larger of the two sizes if you are between sizes. So I have cut out a straight size 46. So we'll see how that goes. I suppose in conclusion, what I'm saying is that I, I found doing all these things really worked for me because I didn't feel so dissociated from my hobby while I was away. And I've come back and I feel I've got some momentum. So although, yes, over the weekend, I will be doing some of the sewing of my denim jacket, which, of course, I haven't progressed. I feel like I'm kind of in the zone and I'm in a position where I can now progress the I am now trousers with a toile and I can do the alterations on the um, mountain view jeans. And I haven't kind of got to start again. And because they're on my mate nine, I'm feeling like I'm making real progress on that. And I've also calmed down a little bit about dress codes for work because I was getting really stressed and actually it's not as formal as all that maybe you don't see so many pairs of jeans around as you did where I worked before but you know I think it'll be fine I think I just need to sort of relax a bit maybe anyway so those are my five ways to progress your handmade sewing or handmade wardrobe when you don't have your sewing machine with you obviously which of those you can do and how you can do them depends on where you are and what you're doing and how much you can carry. So I was really lucky because I've now got a car park space at work. So I could chuck stuff in the boot and it was fine. I still look like a little a little mule because I had, you know, I had my knitting bag and I had I had my home laptop bag and stuff. Um, but I tend to try and take stuff and then drop it back in the car before I go to work. And obviously I was at my mum's, so it was OK. And I knew everything was going to be in a safe and secure space. Obviously, if you're backpacking around Europe, it's going to be a bit different. But you might be at home without your sewing machine. So I just thought that you might find that interesting. Um, so if you've got any other suggestions as to how you can progress your handmade wardrobe when you can't actually use your sewing machine to show, please drop them in the comments because I'd love to hear from you. Um, and let me know if I've come up with anything that you hadn't thought of. I always do reply to comments. So, um, yeah, it'd be great to hear from you. Um, just to mention quickly before I go what I'm wearing, I am wearing a Tammy handmade Naity, which I sewed up at a sewing social, an in-person sewing social that I went to um, in, I think it was April actually, run by the lovely Sam Sequin Gurley. Um, so I had that all cut out and ready to sew and I have now finally hemmed it. So I'm wearing it and I really like it. I'm really pleased with it. There will be more. I don't generally like having my arms bare, but actually I feel OK in this. Um, and just for reference, I made a straight size 10. And the only alteration that I made to it was I added two and a half inches to the length because I know that for some people it was coming up short. And I think actually it would have been too short on me. I'll pop a full length photo in of me in it so you can see. But it comes to, yeah, kind of about my mid hip. So, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. And there will definitely be more of these. So next week, as in, yeah, Monday coming, this is Friday when I'm filming. I am only away one night. I am away Monday night only and then back. And I'm working from home on Wednesday. But, you know, I can still sew Wednesday night, hopefully. Um, so hopefully I'll have a bit more sewing to talk about. And I've got a couple of fabrics to show you, which I promise I didn't buy while I was away. Um, I bought before and I've got a couple of other little bits and pieces to show you, but I'll do that next time. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Um, if you like the content that you're seeing from me, please do consider subscribing. And if you click the little notification bell, you'll be notified of my other vlogs. 
Um, but it's lovely to catch up with you all again. I hope you have a lovely weekend and you get some sewing or progression towards your me made wardrobe in if that's what you want to do. And I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now.